see you. Do you, Jake? Do you really? When James Cameron's Avatar came to theaters in 2009, I was among those who watched it, and I was among those who loved it. To this day, I would be lying to you if I said it didn't hold a place in my sci-fi nerd heart. It was a spectacle, an experience. And even though I think the story was predictable and kind of boring, there were some good things too. Rewatching it in preparation for this video, I appreciated the little moments that Jake and Etiri share that make this a touching love story. I also watched Avatar The Way of Water, and I can say that the story seems to be better than the first one. That said, this video is about one particular aspect of both Avatar and Avatar The Way of Water that I believe is problematic. And if you've seen the title of this video, you can probably guess what that is. I won't get too deep into The Way of Water though, partially to avoid spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen it yet. In case you don't know or forgot, Avatar follows the story of American military veteran Jake Sully. He was born on planet Earth in the 2100s, an Earth that humanity has polluted to the point of being near inhospitable. By some fortunate unfortunate happenstance, Jake ends up with a new opportunity to travel to Pandora, a moon in the Alpha Centauri system, which is home to a humanoid species called the Navi. With the help of a special body that he puppets to advanced technology, he lives in a Navi village, learning their ways and befriending them. But he is really trying to get them to abandon their home so that the humans can have access to a metal they can sell back to Earth. But Jake grows to love the Navi, and a specific Navi woman named Neytiri. So he fights against his own people, and eventually, Team Navi wins, driving humans from Pandora. Just by looking at the Navi, it's clear that they fall into the trope of coding extraterrestrials as people of color, specifically indigenous peoples. They use simple tools like bows and arrows, they wear loincloths, they make stereotypical war cries, and have a special, almost sacred, connection to nature. They're contrasted with the human mining company Jake works for, the RDA, the colonizers that are destroying the balance the Navi have preserved for generations. The human technology is more advanced, destructive, and the humans are even mostly portrayed by white actors. What's also interesting is that they decided to give the rook of Jake and Etiri's children to white actors in The Way of Water. So they didn't even give young black or other non-white actors maybe mixed race actors, the chance to star in this film, even though Neytiri is played by a black actress. But I digress. Considering the world building of the rest of Pandora, it shouldn't be surprising that the Navi are essentially a standard for indigenous peoples. The wildlife in Pandora is full of stand-ins. Horses, lizards, canines, whales, monkeys, flying fish, and more. As beautiful as Pandora is, the ideology of its world building is somewhat lazy, and that same laziness is seen in the apparent choice to use this shorthand to code the Navi as indigenous earth humans going up against colonizing invaders. This choice to portray the Navi as primitive people is interesting. This shorthand would have put the idea in the mind of the audience that the Navi are helpless against the superior technology of the RDA, that they don't stand a chance. Compare that to other movies and shows, with the aliens being technologically advanced, while the human heroes typically have contemporary western technology. The humans are often the underdogs, yes, but the audience is still meant to believe that they have agency, that they have a chance of victory. It's not like there wasn't other shorthand Cameron and his team could have pulled from either. Elves of contemporary fantasy lore are also considered to have a strong connection to nature, and yet they are portrayed as elegant people with sophisticated knowledge of metallurgy and beautiful stone architecture. Even this sort of medieval technology would not stand a chance against RDA if that was what they were going for, but they instead went for the option of POC coding the Navi. As if to make this point even clearer, many of the actors who played Navi characters are non-white, especially in the first movie. These primitive, animalistic, native people are literally modeled after non-white people. 
If you've been following the discourse on Avatar, then it shouldn't surprise you that I'm going to say that the indigenous coding is problematic because it sets Jake up to be the white savior. The white savior trope is nothing new. Wikipedia's definition is as good as any I've ever seen. The white savior is a cinematic trope in which a white central character rescues non-white, often less prominent characters from unfortunate circumstances. This recurs in an array of genres in American cinema, wherein a white protagonist is portrayed as a messianic figure who often learns something about themselves in the course of rescuing non-white characters, or occasionally non-human alien races that substitute as non-white civilizations from their plight. The first time I can remember meeting the white saver trope is in To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, a book I studied in high school. In it, white lawyer Atticus Finch defends innocent black man Tom Robinson against a trumped-up charge, and at the end of the trial, there's this scene. Someone was punching me, but I was reluctant to take my eyes from the people below us and from the image of Atticus's lonely walk down the aisle. Miss Jean Louise? I looked around. They were standing. All around us and in the balcony on the opposite wall, the Negroes were getting to their feet. Reverend Sykes' voice was as distant as Judge Taylor's. Miss Jean Louise, stand up. Your father's passing. Here, Atticus, the white savior, is revered by the black characters for the simple act of genuinely defending a black man in 1930s Alabama, for just being a decent human being and doing his job. I can't help but see the similarities between this response and the way the Amatakaya treat Jake after he attained something that very few Navi have been able to tame the great flying beast called Turuk. Let's backtrack a bit. Within his avatar body, Jake spends three months with a Navi clan called the Amatakaya. He learns their ways and eventually reaches the point that they believe he is ready to be officially made one of them. Three months. Yes, he works hard. I won't take that away from him. But when you consider how long colonized and POC peoples have been under the hand of colonizers to this day, and they, we, are still not fully considered one of them. Cultural, legal, and economic realities keep us outside of the hegemony, even after living within the system they have set up for tens or even hundreds of years. To me, this speaks of the white privilege of the writers, to think that it's that easy to learn all the ways of an oppressed people and be accepted as one of them, all while the oppressed people simply do not have that opportunity. Jake is a white savior because he is instrumental in the Navi fight against the RDA. Near the start of the movie, he is chosen by the Navi Pandoran goddess, for the want of a better word, named Ewa. He manages to tame a Turuk, suggesting that he is a better Navi than the Navi are, and gains their reverence. He leads the Pandoran battle against the RDA and becomes the leader of the Amatakaya by the end of the movie. Again, this is after three months. Without him, his military leadership and the human technology, it is heavily implied that the Navi would have lost their fight. Even when the wildlife of Pandora joins the fight, it is suggested that his prayer to Ewa is what led to it. Jake, Ewa has heard you. Ewa has heard you! It's not just Jake either. Before the events of the film, Grace Augustine, a scientist who works for the RDA, sets up a school for Navi young people. She teaches them English and I don't know what else. The film sets this up as a good thing. Grace is one of the good guys, after all. But in the end, Grace ends up being yet another white savior, albeit a failed one. Considering how much languages of the colonizers have been used as a means of civilizing the natives and the colonized, this feels all too familiar to me. After emancipation of slavery in the British colonies, the 1847 language policy for Jamaica from the colonial office said its goal was to diffuse a grammatical knowledge of the English language as the most important agent of civilization for the colored population of the colonies. Of course, this is an imperfect comparison. Grace is very good at the Navi language after all, so it seems she has respect for them and their way. In many ways though, it feels like a one-way flow of information. 
Grace never said that the Navi helped her with her research or provided her insights as to how Pandora works. In writing Avatar, James Cameron said that witnessing indigenous ceremonies in the Brazilian Amazon was a driving force. I felt like I was 130 years back in time watching what the Lakota Sioux might have been saying at a point when they were being pushed and they were being killed and they were being asked to displace and they were being given some form of compensation. This was a driving force for me in the writing of Avatar. I couldn't help but think that if they had had a time window and they could see the future and they could see their kids committing suicide at the highest suicide rates in the nation because they were hopeless and they were a dead end society, which is what is happening now, they would have fought a lot harder. To me, this sounds problematic, as though this white man is blaming the poor disenfranchised natives for their plight instead of the people who are actively hurting them. And considering the fact that Cameron wrote Avatar with Jake as the one who led the Navi to victory, it's easy to make the argument that he believes on some level that white wisdom, knowledge and resources would have turned the tides on this dead-end society. That's why the POC coding of the Navi in Avatar is problematic. It portrays them as a helpless people who could not have won their freedom without the intervention of a white marine. And as a visual and thematic stand-in for the indigenous and other non-white people of Earth, what does the Navi's story say about us? If you got this far, let me say thank you very much for watching. Please drop a like, subscribe, comment, and share it with your friends. I love making these videos, but it does take a lot of work. And I hope that I can get to the point that my channel can be monetized. And that's something that I can't do without you. That said, I've been Ken Kwame, and I'll see you next time.